Hello and welcome to another captivating episode of Brilliance. I'm Rocket, your co-host and accomplished cloud architect, and joining me is the brilliant Red. Hey, Red. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, it's going good, man. And he is our masterful full-stack developer and fellow co-host. And today we have an exciting topic to dive into with everyone, IoT, the Internet of Things. We'll be exploring the fascinating world of interconnected devices and the possibilities they unlock. And along with that, the impact that they have on everyone's daily lives. So get ready to immerse yourself in the realm of IoT as we unravel its mysteries, discuss its potential, and share our insights on this transformative technology. Let's go ahead and get started, Red. Um, what is IoT? That's a, that's a great way to start. Yeah. Yeah. What is IoT? So the way I would describe it, and I don't like to describe IoT by its like textbook definition because it's it's not uh it's not like layman term friendly. So okay. the way I'm gonna describe it is it is all of the individual devices that we own that can connect and talk to each other over a network. So for example, you have your cell phone, you have your fridge, you have your Roomba, you have your microwave in some instances, and, and even your oven, and they all can communicate with each other and they can do it in such a way that you can monitor everything on your phone, you can monitor the temperature of your oven, you can maybe set it so that, you know, when you say like, hey, Alexa, turn on my oven to 350 degrees, you know, like, it's stuff like that. This is this is the internet of things, and the things part being the devices. Right, right, because that, that's the key part of it, right? It, it's the thing, and, and any, any device that can talk to the internet, and it transmits data to the internet, and it has a yeah. processor, and it's a thing. It is a yeah. thing. So as long as it can process information, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the internet, right? I know it says internet That's of true. things. That's true. But technically, it should be called meaning, network of things. Yeah, is what it's it should the internet, be called. It's the internet as in the interconnectedness of all of these things, right? That's Not right. the internet as in the internet as we know it. So. That's right. So I, I think it'd be better to call it network of things, but, right. you know, hey, I here we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. I mean, so, you know, when we talk about what what makes a device IoT, what yeah. qualifies it, right? So, so there's, there's the first core thing, concepts to it, right? Yeah, th yeah, there are. There are core concepts, so uh, or key elements, as we will say. Uh, okay. The first one being connectivity, right? It has to connect through some medium uh, and be able to transmit data, right? Yeah, just like we were saying. And most people yep. are immediately probably thinking, oh, the internet, you know, all of it connects to the internet. Well, right. there are other things that you may not be thinking about that you do use daily. Right. For example, yeah. Bluetooth. Yeah. Right? That's true. It may not be touching, the like, for example, if you have Bluetooth headphones, right? Those yeah. aren't necessarily going to the internet. I mean, now they probably are because they're all smart. Yeah. But, you know, in the <laughs> old days when Bluetooth headphones first came out, right, they were transmitting a Bluetooth signal back and forth. Or you had some, the, some other Bluetooth device like, a, you know, a uh, mouse or something like that, right? And that's technically yeah. transmitting data across a medium. Or therefore, Fitbit. it is a thing. Wasn't yep. Fitbit, Fitbit all is a over great Bluetooth? Example. Yeah. Fitbit is a great example of IoT because it does. It's it does the data collection. It does right. a little bit of processing and it, it has a, a little data. sensor on it, right? Yep. It's 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 a it's an internet of things device. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So that brings us into the next part of what defines an IoT uh, device and that is sensing and data collection, right? So whether okay. it's a gyrometer that's measuring your steps or it's a you your know, position, right? Your position yeah. or for, for GPS, right? Your position for GPS or yeah. it's, you know, measuring the temperature of something, right? That yeah. is like your smart thermostat, right? Right. Like, you know, you go get a Google Nest today, it's going to tell you your AC has been running for four hours and it's 78 or 78% 78 humidity in your house. You know what right. I mean? Like that's, that's an IoT device right there. That's right. That's right. And it has to be able to not only sense that information, but also be able to translate it in a way that you can send it to something. Right? That's right. And how it does has it, to make it, it useful. It can't just sense the information and transmit it either. Like it's got, it's, it's, there's so many steps to it. It has to be able to sense that information and process it, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Just so like, it receives the information as right. like ones and zeros, right? Then it has right. to say, okay, what do I do with these ones and zeros? Oh, these ones and zeros represent a humidity. So I need to use this mathematical algorithm to determine the humidity based on the ones and zeros I received. Right. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Which brings us to the next part, which the third key element I would say is data processing and some analytics too, right? I mean, 
you've Analytics, got to be able to yeah. do stuff with this data that you're collecting. And again, IoT devices, you think about like think about Samsung, right? So Samsung has a lot of smart connected devices that are in your kitchen. Think about the amount of data that Samsung can collect from your fridge and not just your fridge, but every fridge that is sold in the nation. They can collect data on and get warranty information. They can do marketing campaigns with this, like all of this stuff, service campaigns, right? All of these things all connect back up to one central spot for, you know, quote unquote updates. It's always your connect for updates, right? (laughs) That's always the sales pitch. You got to connect it for an update. So um, that is really the big part of IoT is taking these little tiny devices that on their own really don't do much, but you plug it into its one little puzzle piece and a very, very large puzzle that can build giant data models of really, really useful information and allow AI and ML to process that and then give predictions. That's yeah. I mean, what a great example of IoT because we can we're taking now now you're taking the next step of just using IoT on our individual devices for our own individual benefit, and you're saying let's collectively use IoT on millions of devices for the better benefit of humanity as a whole. Right, right. That that is absolutely right. Uh, which comes into the next part. These are, these are just lining up so well. But the next part <laughs> is the automation and control. Right. So. These devices send data, uh, but they also are able to receive instructions, right? So if I have, for example, a really good example with this is say I have a a drone that is being controlled via cellular satellite and it is up in the air, right? Well, how do you control that drone? You send signals to it, right? And the same thing with even down to the smallest little sensor, maybe you have a reset command that resets the probe, right? And so- being and in able this to case, remotely touch things without having to physically get to them is well, a yeah. huge leap forward. Oh, yeah. And, and and in this case, we're not just talking about maybe just driving a drone. We're also talking about maybe throwing an automated drone, the one that you're not even driving. It has like a preset path. Right. And it's taking pictures and getting monitor like heat maps and stuff like that. And it needs to send that information back. Maybe it needs to send it in real time. Maybe there's some sort of important... Right. Like we're monitoring a live volcano and we're trying to get the exact time it's going to blow up, right? So we throw a drone at it and we're getting heat maps and all this stuff and we need this data right now, you know? Right, right. That's exactly right. Which comes into the final key element that I would consider with this, which is integration and operability, right? So the IoT allows for basically anything to interoperate with anything. And this is through a really cool concept called... IFTTT and Red, I know you can talk more about what that means and what you what it kind of represents. Yeah, I if this, then that. And most people are gonna be familiar with this concept with smart home devices. So right. when you say if this, then that. So it's saying if this happens, then do this, right? So right. if I walk in my front door, then the light should turn on. If right. I you know, turn on my AC, then it should notify me. If I leave my fridge door open, then I should get a notification. Right. You know, if that, this, that's then absolutely that. right. Yeah. yeah. And so it allows, and again, this is on a small scale, but think about it on like a Amazon's logistic network, right? Right. I mean, we'll talk more about that later, but just thinking about the size and like yeah, complexity of that just and all of take, that talks Take to a each moment other. to absorb this information. Yes. Think about how you can use it on a very large scale versus right. just on your own fridge. Right. Yeah. That, that's absolutely right. Um, all right. So we've defined the key elements here. Uh, let's go over. Okay, I, there was a couple other examples that I wanted to bring up with this. Uh, and one of the coolest ones, I, I, I'm a huge uh, farming simulator guy. And so the agriculture and farming aspect combined with technology and especially around IOT and the ability for you to use sensors and things, uh, it's just all kinds of different sensors and cameras to grow food so much more efficiently is just the coolest thing in the world to me. How, so, so wait, how do you, how do you, let's, let's think about that for a second. What kind of information do you think would be given back? That would help you grow food more efficiently. Well, okay. The first one, the most obvious one, soil. Soil information. So moisture. Like what kind? Yeah. Well, moisture, temperature, nutrient levels. Like there's all those. pH, right? Yep. Like pH pH is so important too. Like 
I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot. Uh, yeah, about I it. mean, yeah, and and you could detect, uh, you know, pest control, right? And this is kind of back to the nutrient thing, but you could detect when's the last time these plants have been sprayed with pest control? Has it been too much? Same thing with fertilizer. Uh, right. Same, you know, like I mean, there's all these different things that you can do, and even thinking about something as simple as watering your plants, right? And I know I'm talking about it on a very large scale, but even on a very small scale, you could put a little Bluetooth oh, control. Sen- yeah, there are you know, sensors for sensor. people to yeah. buy. Yeah, and, and yeah. Um, the other side of that, which uh, this is a personal hobby side that I wanted to throw in there, but uh, Red and I are both very avid reef keepers, and we use IoT devices on our reef tanks. That's right, all day long. We I, do. We, have, we both have. Uh, it's called the Apex, but we both the have Apex. devices that completely why, manage. Why don't I? I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull up the Apex right now and may give a short description of of what exactly it's giving me. So okay. when I pull up my apex to manage my reef tank, and we know yep. r- when we're talking about reef tank, we're talking about we're trying to recreate a coral reef in our own house. Um, right. So we need salt water, and it's not just any like salt water; it's like ocean salt water. So there's all kinds of chemicals and things. Yeah, you can't take very complex. Salt and pour yeah, it into so water and expect you have like the level of oxygen that's in your water. You have the salinity, which is how much salt is in your water com- compared to the reverse osmosis water. Then you have the right. pH level. Then I'm seeing the temperature, right? And I have all of this information. I got 30, I got 36 parts per trillion on my sal- salinity, which is about, a li- it's just slightly too high. Um, right, right. But what? Do, and what then, where are you viewing this again, though? This is all on my my app on my phone, and this and is where... coming from a big fat device that's underneath yeah. my fish tank, just plugged in, and it's it's sending me all this information in real time. And I can go and I can turn off my little heater. I can turn off pumps and stuff like that. Now, and lights. I can, now can you really cool. can you do you have to access this only within your home, or do you have to access? Can no, you I access can access it anywhere, it anywhere in the world. In right. fact, I was in Vietnam a few months ago, and I accessed it there. So. That, and and that is the beauty of IoT devices is that they all usually the ones that you know of they funnel via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and then they funnel up and report that data up to some cloud service. The That's ones right. that most people interface with. On the enterprise side and on the uh, you know the business-specific side, some of those might not be the case. But for the most part, most of them interface with some cloud application. Right. So uh, another one that a lot of people don't think of, but like healthcare devices, Right. Oh, healthcare. I always say this to everybody. Healthcare and tech go hand in hand. Any changes in in tech are going to impact healthcare. Yeah, but think about like something like, uh, and I I am not a medical expert whatsoever, but the thing that goes beep 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 beep. Right. <laughs> what is yeah, that? Yeah, the heart heart monitor. Is, is it just called a heart monitor? I figured there well, was some fancy there, name. No, for there it, there but. is a fancy name for it, but just layman's terms is the a heart monitor. Okay. So anyway, but yeah. think about a heart monitor that if it goes beep, then it may right. uh, you're not just waiting for a nurse to hear it when she might be on her lunch break. Uh, it actually is like sending a shit ton of messages and notifications to every nurse on the floor, be that it did something, right? Yeah, well, it, do, it does send, yeah, it sends all this, the whole, every nurse on the floor now, gets a but code. It didn't yeah. always, right? No, it didn't. Yeah, it had to make the loud noise and you just had to catch it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And think about like from any other medical devices that are monitoring you or even from at home, right? And now, you know, they have the, uh, uh, the, the heart things, right? That, that, report in the heart that's monitors always, yeah, yeah the um uh what's it called they, they have monitors for diabetes patients as well cholesterol right. patients and there's like all the stuff for cholesterol has gotten significantly better as well like there's even like automatic injecting stuff for cholesterol that'll like hey your cholesterol is low go ahead and inject you know like yeah, yeah there's all kinds yeah. of stuff you know oh yeah yeah absolutely Absolutely. And, and and you used to take take your blood sample, right? And then you would like send it in, like prick your thumb and you'd send in a blood sample every once in a while. Now you prick your thumb and you get the response back on a little tiny device. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just crazy. But to circle it back around, those are all IoT devices cuz I all I have talk. an interesting IoT device that I learned about when I was working at a hospital one time. Okay. There's a little pill that's like got a camera in it. And you swallow it, and you poop it out, and it's a good way for them to film your whole digestive tract to see if there's any issues. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you don't have to yeah. plug it in because it's streaming no, real time, right? you don't have to plug it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. really neat. <laughs> that is so cool. All yeah. right. Are you ready? Because yep, we're about I'm to... ready. We're about to really touch on the... the my, my body's the ready. ...the mountain peak of IoT. All oh, right? boy. 
What's the and what is the peak? What's what is it? it? Is, what's the climax? It is Amazon. Amazon. Amazon's the climax? Amazon is the climax because the industrial the fourth industrial revolution or it's called Industry 4.0, that is led specifically by IoT. And it's really, really around it's it's smart factories and industrial automation. So you oh, think about every yeah. package, right? Do, so I don't know if you know this, but a lot of Amazon packages are packaged by robots. They're not packaged by people. No, I thought they were packaged. I thought they were on a line and being packaged by people. Like all the videos I see are people just like in a line, just packaging them quickly. Amazon has not just the ability to package certain items with robots, but they also move entire, they move inventory around with robots. I saw those. They'll You've move entire, those? like yeah. an entire, you know how you have an aisle in a grocery store? Well, at Amazon, right. they have aisles of, of just items, right? Right. So they'll have like machines roll up and pick up the, the whole aisle and move it around. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's absolutely awesome thinking about that. All of those things are talking to each other. Every machine is talking to each other. And then think about this, right? So even outside of Amazon, right? Because Amazon has really been a pioneer with this kind of stuff um, outside of the car industry. But so we'll talk about the car industry, right? And building cars, all of the devices that go into that now, right? There's not 10,000 people on the line. You've got robots, Yep. You got robots that are building these cars and putting everything together right. and the people are there just kind of guide them. But for the most part, they know exactly what they're doing from start to finish. Right? Yeah. If you notice some of the, the car manufacturers that have high, um, rely, I mean, low reliability scores, um, you look back at them and surprisingly, you're going to find that some of those low reliability scores are because the people in the factory are making so many mistakes. Yep. That that's, and exactly it's sad. Right. It's sad, but it's true. That is, that's the reason why in most yeah. cases, yeah, no, that's that's exactly right. Unless it's a German car, because Germans yeah. are just different. But <laughs> <laughs> no, they still use a ton of automation, yeah. and they just are very, very thorough. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, uh, speaking of cars, we didn't even talk about that. IoT is like what's driving all the smart cars today. Right. Exactly. IoT is driving all the smart cars today. I mean, how do you think? your car is is capable of learning uh how to how to drive on a path you know what i mean like a, it's it is right. a data set that it receives but you're also feeding back to that data set you know how right. are we feeding back to that data set it's the internet of things yeah yeah so like and, and you 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 might ask yourself well okay so my my everything that's in my house connects to wi-fi right or it connects to my phone via bluetooth my phone is obviously over cellular everything's uh, talking to each other right They're everything's talking to each other but how does the car talk to my phone right other than wi-fi or, or bluetooth for like right, radio like but how can, does my can car hit a button on your phone service to unlock or, yeah right how does it do that right so it works via cellular but you might be thinking if you're if you're a software developer then you're gonna be saying like well it's probably a rest request or something like that wrong it's not yeah. it's a really no... cool protocol that's called mqtt yep yeah there's and, uh, there is no rest uh, protocols being used in IoT because REST is it's too takes too long. Right. I mean, technically that, that's, you could that's you right. could you could technically use the REST protocol for IoT because REST is technically the protocol is technically HTTP Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is the yeah, same yeah, thing yeah. that's used over the web to pull up any website, right? Right. And a lot but, of IoT devices use that, right? They but do. Specifically for cars, right? Yeah. Because it's not always guaranteed that there's going to be a connection, right? Yeah. So you need something more and the network engineers out there, right? You need something more on the UDP side of streaming data and pushing it up for whenever it's available rather than a waiting for connection, right? That's right. Or wanting to receive a response, right? Right, exactly. That's the big I thing. don't need a response. I just need to send data and then listen for data. Right. Whatever yeah. happens in the middle, if there's data lost, then there's data lost. Right. And you can build different ways of redundancy in there rather than verifying a packet, because it could be that it just is out of range at that moment. And so you're not going to error anything out. You're just going to wait for it to reconnect. Right. And that's the benefit. That's right. Of this. And it's just going to keep MQTT. trying to send messages like it's 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 not going to error. It's never going to error. It's just going to continue to send messages until right. it finally gets a connection. And then it's like nothing even happened, really. It'll just keep sending those messages. Right. Right. And MQTT, it specifically supports three different levels of reliability. Um, if you're ever going to try it out, like there's at most once, at least once, and then exactly once. So you can choose how resilient you want that message to be. 
there's also a confirmable and non-confirmable piece to it as well. So anyway, I would encourage everyone to go read up on MQTT because any kind of device that you're wanting to interface with, uh, it's a really cool protocol to learn. And it's a really, it's used by a lot of things that people just don't realize. It's, it's kind of like the thing of like, does everyone realize that almost every head unit in the United States is written with Java? For right. Card. Yeah. Like almost every <laughs> single one is written in Java. Good point. Yep. <laughs> like, uh, like there's still a demand. I promise Java is not dead. There's still yeah. a demand out Dra- there. Java is not going to be dead. Just as, It's the same thing as PHP. People keep saying, oh, PHP is going to die. It's like, and now it, it never and, will. And it still runs how, what percentage of all websites? Uh, a like, lot. Like, really is high. Is it still 80%? I don't <laughs> I mean, know again, if it's 80%, but it's pretty it, high. Of that 80% or uh, 99% of that 80% is WordPress, <laughs> but... <laughs> But still, it counts, right? Yeah, I guess. (laughs) So, uh, anyway, tangent on our uh, issues with PHP. But um, so the flip side to this that, you know, when you're building out applications for IoT things is it all has to have somewhere to store the data, right? And so the most obvious answer to that is the cloud. And while you could do it on prem right uh it just it things things just feel better in the cloud when you're they, feel, IoT they just out. feel better you know no, like that, the main reason is is you need a central location so, to receive this data right that's right like, like we said earlier we're trying to think on the betterment of humanity not just your individual self right right so right. if we have all of these smart cars now and they're all sending messages uh we need a, a central place for all those messages to be stored um, so that that way we can process that information, you know, right. How often is the oil getting down to like 62% efficiency? How often is the car overheating, you know? And, and then right. as soon as, and then we get some sort of notification as, as the manufacturer, I say, oh my God, 97% of our cars are, are getting an overheating issue and right. the customer doesn't even know about it. Exactly. But we do because we have sensors and they're sending us information. Right. Right. That, that's exactly This right. is where the cloud comes in. Also, I need the, I need scalability. the right like scalability yes we're talking about an endless amount of devices and and when we say endless we mean it's unpredictable how many devices will be connecting so you need it to scale yeah and uh, scaling and storage and processing power and even some of the insights that cloud you know providers offer right aws iot is a great example of this you can build out your entire iot infrastructure in AWS and use the MQTT protocol to communicate with everything. Um, But the amount of analytics that you can pull out of that with it all being centralized in AWS is just so invaluable. Uh, You can build, you can stand up entire hives just incredibly quickly compared to trying to do it yourself. Right. Yes. It's, it's incredible. I mean, AWS has provided us all kinds of incredible tools to make our lives easier. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to do an AWS episode. I think so. And maybe we just break it down by like category too, because Jesus Christ, I know we've talked about this a couple of times, but there's just so much stuff in there. There is so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um well let's say well, you know, there what are the other protocols people could use for uh IoT. Oh, I mean MQTT is amazing, but what yeah, are some other we protocols? Talked, uh, we talked about HTTP two, right? So we hit on that. That some some IoT devices do use REST. Right. Uh, I'm sure there's even a couple out there that use XML and SOAP to t- talk to each other. Uh, if you oh my God. one of those, if people have to work with that, I'm so sorry, but I'm sure that's out there. Um, there is another one that I did not hear of before doing research before this episode, but it is called COAP. And I hope I'm saying this right, but it's COAP, COAP. I don't know. Oh, that's the uh, first I've heard of it as well. I haven't heard yeah, of that one. It stands for Constrained Application Protocol. And basically the difference between MQTT and COAP is that COAP is more for like very, very resource constrained devices, like the lowest possible processing power that you could need, right? Uh, And I think about like something that's running on a battery that's going to be sending right. information in an interval right. for a yeah. very long time, right? Something like, like a, heat, a GPS like a heat tracker. sensor, a, a GPS heat sensor. tracker, heat sensor. Yep. Or a just any battery powered device, right? That's going to communicate to something locally. Maybe it's not because again, you think about how much power does it take for me to 
have a cellular chip, right? How much power does it take for me to connect to Wi-Fi? Maybe it's not connecting to Wi-Fi. Maybe it's using something very low power like Bluetooth. And it's just sending that on an interval to some hub that's going to send the rest of the, the way. Right. Right. Samsung, uh, and they might use this, but Samsung uh, has their, their home hub, I think is what it's called. Maybe it's not called a home hub, but it's something like that. But basically you can take all these devices that don't necessarily connect to the Wi-Fi and the internet, but they all have these little, you know, COAP or Zigbee. That's another protocol. That's very similar to the other ones. Phil- the Philips Hue lights, some of them just connect over this uh, protocol, I'm sure. Yep, exactly. And the, and they just connect, and then that hub takes care of all the translation, which comes into that IFTTT, right? Right. If and this so, and that, yeah. Yep, exactly. So, yeah. So, I mean, th- those are some cool protocols to check out for you guys. Um, it's, again, a whole new world compared to the rest of, like, you know, data and APIs and connecting to things. Uh, it's just different protocols. It's, it's its own little thing, but it's so, so powerful once you get the hang of it. So, um, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about the future. So sur- around IoT. what's in our future. Can I just well, say the I think one thing letters. that I'm looking forward to the most for our future is self-driving cars and having all oh. these cars communicate with each other so that they're like well, s- not smacking into each other. We could, cause if all the cars are communicating to each other, we could be going at 800 miles per hour and the chances of an accident happening are probably like 0.01%. Right. Yeah. But I think, I think that's in addition to the IOT is the AI, right? The AI. Yeah. The AI part of it. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the big, that's the because big daddy. You have to be able to process that information at a quick enough speed to be able to make those decisions and then send it to the car instantaneously, right? Not just car to car, but I'm talking about car, like the, like your own car being able to detect all of those changes that are happening right. in an ever and make a decision. Right. Yeah. Environment. Right, and then you have other cars. And then you've got the cars that aren't all connected together that are still out there causing chaos. That's going to be chaos. tricky. Yeah. It will be I tricky. I wonder if we can retrofit that. I, I don't know how that's going to work. That's going to be really you know, tricky. I would not be surprised in a couple you of know, years. It would probably be pretty easy to retrofit some, retrofit some sort of uh, signal on a car so that it, it's communicating with the self-driving cars. And then well, if you're, driving, much, if you're manually driving, you have to drive at a certain speed. Right. And then if you're self-driving, then it can just do whatever it wants. Well, think about how much information you get from the OBD, ODB, OBD2 sensor or the port. It's the port you plug into. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. The car. Right. Yeah. You can get your speed information. You can get your, you know, your battery. And also has to do send information to the other cars. Yeah. Yeah. You won't necessarily get like, you know, your, your steering angle and stuff like that. I don't think, but you might, I don't know. Actually, you you can, you absolutely can. Yeah, I think it dep- It probably depends on the car and what they send through for the manufacturer. I, I, I've but, seen some uh, videos of even older cars, yeah, really older cars. I know you can tune have, your engine with it, right? Because you can plug the little chip in it, I think, right? Yeah, you can, yeah. yes. And and yeah. But they have like any car that little, has but. the electric steering, will you'll be able to see, like you'll be oh, able yeah, to adjust yeah, that's it. that's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. So, yeah, I mean, like, so, so right there, you could just attach a little thing that starts transmitting on some, again, it doesn't have to be the internet, but it could be some localized network that all these cars talk to each other, right? And it's, it's a, a decentralized network. And you just, as when you come in contact, it sees it and it just moves on and it understands it, the information right. that's being broadcasted and then it processes it. Your car processes what another car sends and vice versa. Right. Exactly. And it's a yeah. Universal. This is the this is the big thing for car manufacturers. Make it universal. And that's not, not a it car manufacturer thing. That's going to be a government regulation. Well, that's thing. true. That is a government yeah. regulation thing. Yeah. Make it universal because it's the safety behind that will be absolutely huge. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it has to be universal. There's really no choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Volkswagen said they were going right, but we, they actually went left. So yeah. we went right, and then we. Oh them. damn those <laughs> Volkswagen processors! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. That, and then just uh, you know, AI, right? I mean, like the the impact that AI will have on everything, including IoT, will just be right. huge as we continue to you know. Yeah, as we send out. trillions of bits of information to artificial intelligence up in the cloud from our mobile device, mobile devices. I mean, it's just, it's going to change the world as we know it. And right. I want to say like 15, 20 years, we'll be in a completely different world. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. So, all right. Well, um, I think we covered IOT pretty good, Red. What do you think? 
Uh, that was I think that was great. We did a great yeah. job. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna give you so a too. virtual high five on that one. Oh, high fucking five, my guy. Yeah, boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> damn, little mama. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, just to recap really quick, what we did discuss today, we talked about what IoT is, the Internet of Things, and we talked about some different ways that IoT impacts you already, and we kind of explained the way that. Things communicate with the internet and the cloud and the other things that are around them. Um, yeah, I, I mean, again, I think we covered pretty much everything there is to know about IoT today from a very high level. Yeah. Thank you, everyone who has listened so far to our podcast. Um, absolutely. From the bottom of our hearts, we really, we really genuinely appreciate you guys tuning in and listening. This is something both Rocket and I really enjoy doing, and we just hope we get to keep doing it. Yeah, and, and you're, you guys supporting us and engaging with us just is the absolute best. Uh, and we look forward to bringing you guys more awesome content in the future. So uh, thank you again for being a part of the Curly Brace podcast family and continue, continuing to allow us to do this kind of stuff. It, so, If anyone would like to leave feedback or comments yes, or any kind of suggestions yes. for future episodes, please reach out to us. Uh, we're on Twitter. You can comment on you can comment on Spotify, right, Rocket? Yep, you can. You can. Yeah. Uh, and you can actually, I, and I've talked about this previously, but you can actually send Red and I a voice message on Spotify. So you That's can actually right. send us a voice recording on Spotify if you want to give us an idea, tell us that we, you know, suck dick. I mean, like whatever you want to say. I, at this uh, point, I don't know about that. I'll take it. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> all right on that note uh stay curious stay inspired and keep exploring the possibilities of the digital age all right red until next time see you later later <laughs>